Hey folks, it's CGM, and I'm in Beulahville, yeah. Beulahville, North Carolina. So I'm out here at the headquarters of Slinging Chains. Got my old buddy Travis Finley here. I got out here, I flew in Tuesday to Greensboro to see some family. And then Wednesday I was down here and I've been learning and having a great time uh, ever since. So when I got down here, I told Travis, uh, 606 sets last year, the year before like 618 or, or how, however it's mixed up there, but he's producing over 600 pairs of spurs a year. He's, 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 he's already a 400 this year. And so I said to myself, I gotta go see how this is done. Couldn't believe it. Well, what we're gonna do is we've shot a little video. We're gonna a series that we're gonna shoot a series of videos for you today. We're gonna make a pair of spurs from beginning to end in one hour finished beginning to end i ain't kidding you stay tuned we've got a lot of fun things we've got some guest appearances from several different machines that have been named in here matt humphreys bruce cheney billy clapper stuart williamson ernie marsh wilson capron stay tuned we're going to break it all down step by step how you build them in one hour we're going to make a pair of horse spurs beginning to end Beulahville, North Carolina, it's 84, it feels 104. We're having fun. This is Disneyland of spur making. Come on, America, come build with us. Go ahead. All right, first we need the parts to build the spur. Okay, T, we've got a men's size eight. Uh, we need an eight inch heel band for a size uh, 10 boot. Okay, so we got, you need two heel bands to build the set of spurs. What else do we need, T? We need a shank number four. We need two shanks. Okay, so then that takes care of the general build of the spur. Now we need to build the hangers, T. So we need some strapping material to fit in these. This is 5 8 inches wide. We've got some half inch strapping material here that we'll bend to make no, our own hang hangers. Half, slots. So half inch slot, excuse me. And then this is just under half inch, so that it slides nicely in between. What we use for the hangers is 16D, three and a half inch, bright finished nails, non-galvanized. And then we're gonna snap those heads off, bend them in a jig, and run you through the process on how we how he makes his hangers. We need four spur buttons. Bill Adamson. Bill Adamson for the four spur buttons there. And we need a couple of rowels. We're gonna put a couple of rowels that are kind of unique to what Travis has designed. You see these as we go along here, kind of a horseshoe horse foot in there, horse, horse hoof. Okay, we need a couple of route pins. All right, and that'll complete all the parts that we need. Two heel bands, two shanks. Now our shanks are half inch. These are 3 16 We've got uprights and slanted. Uh, these are inch and a 16th center on center. Uh, and we've got just under half inch on our metal here. The nails, four spur buttons, rouse. Let's go build a pair of spurs. They were taking that eight inch heel band and we have put that baby in our Wilson vise, Wilson the Okay, so we're putting a nice little angle on there. So what, what, what he has there is a half inch, what they call a, uh, belt sander, I guess it's a uh, mini, belt. mini belt sander. So he does that, spins that around, and he concentrates over there on the other side. The eye is on this side. And there's different grits that you can put on there, but you see how that makes a nice bevel in there? Okay. Then, that too, you gotta make a pair. Quick and slick. See that? Just in that slot, just perfect. When we set up those heel bands uh, to, have, to get a cut, we set it up to where it fit in there just perfect for that. And it's uh, uh, just a little bit tighter than that. But when you put in that sander, what it does is knock that edge down just perfect. 
And what he does is he concentrates each side. First, you do the left side first and the right. Okay, now what the next step is he's going to do is he's going to take those heel bands that he's already prepped and beveled those hanger slots. You take them over here to the drill press. And the drill press, Billy Clapper! Yep, Clapper's in the house. So, you know, Billy makes one piece first, and he has to drill a hole in everything. And he has uh, about three drill presses, I think, in the video that I watched. So, Travis put a quarter inch bit in there, tightening that down. And what he is going to do is just what they, I guess they call it a chamfer. Chamfer or chamfered. So, what he's doing is he's just going down a little way, he's making a making a uh, chamfered in there, making that quarter inch hole just a, a little bit larger than the 3 16 that it was cut. So the weld so, Yeah, then the weld to sit down in there flat. We'll do, be doing everything on a TIG weld. So you see that it just spins those out real quick. Just cleaning up, and that is all four of those. Okay, so that's two minutes and 39 seconds with a bevel and chamfered and break. Okay, next up on our process, we need to bend those heel bands. So back over to the Wilson Vice, and what Travis has figured out is an ingenious way to bend these babies. So what he has is just a regular men metal bender. I mean, you can find them at Harbor Freight, you can find them several places. So what he does, he's got, he got two and seven eighths inch die that's inside of there. He clamps that down. So he takes that, he, that clamp, that vice grip is hooked onto that block, okay? So then that block holds that band exactly where it needs to be. Then this does all the rest. You got a two and seven eighths roller here. You can size up or size down. We're just making it for a size 10 boot. So we've got a two and seven eighths in there. You can go up three, three inch if you need to do a bigger one on an eight and a half inch band, but it's the same principle. Then you put it in that metal bender and then it just comes right on around. Now he just tuned out, it turned out two of those, two heel bands, two heel bands, eight inch for size 10 boots. Next spot, next stop over here to Tom Balding at the welding station. All right, now the next step on the process is we've got to get these shank split. Okay, he's got an ingenious way to do that folks. So he's marked out how deep he needs to go for the rouse. He's made a line on there, okay? Now, on over to our friend Bruce Cheney. Cheney's in the house, BC, yep. So it's all, uh, Bruce and I have laughed on several occasions that always makes it nervous, makes you nervous on the hands but... Let me show you how nice that is. See that? Look at that, it's perfect. Okay, that's just a DeWalt uh, chop saw blade. And then he's got a, a drill press vise in there. splits in two minutes okay we've been filming right here the whole time okay that's two splits in two minutes okay back over now to Tom Balding we let those sit for a minute and break break time break 
Great. All right. It's always a good idea to prep your metal before you get ready to weld it, especially on TIG welding. So uh, he's going ahead and polishing that up. And what Travis uses a lot in his shop is what they call a paper disc. And you can find them uh, anywhere. We get, uh, saw them over at Harbor Freight, but that's a, I think a five inch disc on an angle grinder. That's got a pad underneath it and then he puts the 220 papers on there. These Bauer 220 papers. They're hook and loop. And that does, it just gives you a real nice clean prep surface. You see when they come out of there, shiny, all prepped, all ready to go, ready to be TIG welded. We're taken from here, and we're going to go directly over to the TIG welding. Just cleaning those up a little bit. Now one thing that is pretty key here that I think is important to share is I notice this, Travis takes a switch. Okay, you see this switch? He's got low, medium, and high. He takes that 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 con that controller and uh, on that hooking, it's a router speed controller. So he'll put that on that uh, Metabo angle grinder and he says that these spin slower than like the red ones. But he'll put, uh, he'll put that pad on there and that hook and loop on there and then turn it way down and and he just, just stores his pads right in here the stack of them there and polishes things on up now we're going to go right into welding okay so the metal's been prepped two minutes uh, we're going to take a break and into welding over to tom balding station again thanks for tuning in all right now we want to into the welding hey we got to swing by and say hi to jim poor hi jim poor okay now over here to the welder See, I just weld that in there. But now what Travis has here is a jig. He's got this, uh, and I saw he's got a few of these different plates. This one here, he said, is right for a men's size 10, 8 inch heel band. So what he's got is he's got this just off center, quarter inch off the center in the back. It's a little tight and a little snug. And he needs black bar or a screwdriver. The see pops out on out. That's important. You know, you just kind of tack that top. It's important to flip it over and go right to this. Okay, go ahead and weld that up. It moves right along. Now in this, out of here in the shop, he's only got 110 power. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the settings. So he's got it turned all the way up. It's pegged out pegged out down there on that he's running about 18 pounds of gas and the unique thing about this welder and he says is real user friendly is it's got a trigger right here so instead of running foot feed you just hit the trigger and then away you go on your gas so back into the jig he comes it's gonna go ahead and finish that top on out heck he's on the other spur already here's the first spur Top, weld it up, flip it over, bottom all welded, okay, back over here. Top and bottom. Now, see, he uses that clamp there. Got another clamp. And what he does is he just sets them up as a pair, does everything as a pair. He said when he's on 220 power, he'll run his heat about 140 on that, still at the same level of gas, about 18. And when I was watching underneath there, what he's doing is he's just doing a, uh, it goes one pass. It's a heavy swirl, one pass, but uh, I think I saw 
uh, one post, Humphrey said, you know, make sure you're moving right along. And I think that's an important tip there is, is stay right after it, move right along, let her puddle up good and then uh, keep after it. Get right on across. You get to the end, hold her there for a minute, let that gas finish her out. Nice wells, bud. So we're three minutes and 15 seconds in. Tops and bottoms are welded. One side's welded. Just getting everything all set up. This Jim Poor over here, waiting his turn. Okay, here we go again. See, as you can see, it doesn't take him long at all to get across there. And I did say he is running a 110 on a 110 outlet with the welder turned all the way up, 18 gas. So, one thing that maybe we can point out in there is this, you know, a uh, um, person wanting to get into spur making or, or has some interest in it, uh, is certainly, you know, you got access to parts and you got a little knowledge in welding, uh, basic uh, tools and equipment, and you don't see anything real crazy here, that's some other things we need to introduce as we go along here. It's kind of saving, but we'll show that as we go along here. But both sides are welded up, tops and bottoms, and four minutes, 30 seconds. Thanks, on to the next step. All right, America, on to the next step. We're gonna dress these babies down. Now, I'm telling you what, you wanna see something gets dressed down. This deal here, he gets right after it. So I said, how are you getting that meat and all that off of there? What are you doing? Well, so what he's, how's he getting the meat of the well off? So what he uses is, uh, he likes a benchmark, you know, an eight, uh, this is an 80 grit right here. Benchmark thin flat face, okay? Yeah, it's a new one on there, okay? So in this stage of the process, he's, he's going in there and he's cleaning the meat out of that well. He's just removing the meat. And he's not undercutting the spur. That's the key thing there. You gotta be careful. You can't undercut the spur. So all he does is goes in, he goes in and takes out just the meat, okay? The meat only. Yeah, I'll give you a close up view of this one. Good. Right, taking that angle right in there, not aggressively either. So what you're doing is you're taking a tool that's spinning. The 12,000 RPM, the 80 grit paper. If you're taking the tool to the work, see? I think that's where he's got his speed and his efficiency is he chalks everything up, he chalks the piece up, and then he brings the tool to the job site, where he, then he cleans everything up and he does everything in Paris. So he's watching his lines, keeping everything symmetric. So he's done the two side dress down. Then he goes to the shank, and he has to go in there and dig a little of that, get that weld out of there, and then he'll start his taper. And you see him taper that on coming on back, out the back. And he started off with a, a new 80 grit thin, thin. That piece down there. He's got her open wide open. Right down here on the switch, that, the top one is his regular flap disc, and the grinder he's running down, and then that switch is on the bottom. And he doesn't usually take that switch off at low power when he's running his paper disc. The next stage in the process. So he's going ahead here, cleaning things up. Tapering these on down. I'll just keep you right on in here. And when we get done, we'll throw them out on the steel and we'll let you see. They ain't undercut. They got the uh, they got good good lines to them. They're dressed. A be finished spur at that stage in the process and ready to go to the hanger. But as you see, he doesn't he doesn't mess around. But the, it, it starts off with the two sides, cleans just the weld down, goes to the shank, cleaning the weld down, and once he gets that weld cut cleaned out down inside of there, he doesn't mess around inside of that too awful much. Once he's down, what I call down in the danger zone. Right in there with a two transition. That's the danger zone. It's real bad to undercut in there if you're not careful. So take your time. If you're not as quick, 
like this. You can only stop and look down like this. Like when Sam Gooding showed uh, at, the, at the gathering, when uh, Sam Gooding showed Wilson Capron that an anvil had a side, a flat edge on the side. Wilson would get down and look it over like this, like this, and then, well, Sammy said, you put it up against the side of your anvil like this, Wilson. He said, my anvil don't have a side like that. Ha! Free joke. So he's in there digging it on out of there. You see, he's doing a little excavation work now. Back to that chain. So right now we're four minutes into this deal, okay? And I'm gonna break it into two sections so you kind of keep track of the time. What I'll do is break it into two different parts of the grinding process. So the first one that we're doing now is what I'm gonna call the flap wheels, okay? If we're gonna do the flap wheels, here and then we'll go into the paper disc on the next step more finishing process okay and we run through that so that's where we're at on this deal right now so what he does is now is he, is he starts to kind of get that transition into there what is he what he's doing is he just keeping track of his uh, his lines there he's making sure you can always uh take your time too if you're uh if you're new to the game, just a little bit, you gotta remember, that is really spinning fast. And the margin for error is small. So you need to be paying attention. There's no days off with these angle grinders. They're to work all the time. You know, and they're not very forgiving. So you see, he's safety up pretty good. Making sure he's, you know, wearing his gloves. And, and as you can see, the, heel, the bends in them heel bands are spot on. Nice fit for a boot. I'll come out of that, that, that bed right there. All right. Does that got us for uh, for flap disc then? Bottom. Oh, he's got to still do the bottom. All right. Five minutes in. Now, I've already ground down all the wells. I'm going to go on in here. Let me have you have a look. See? See that? See that? I'll get on over the top. You can have a look. See that? See? Telling you what, I hook and loop, he doesn't tear them discs off very much. And I tell you why, because that switch. That switch slows things down, keeps it where it's at a manageable speed. So what, he, what he's doing is he's got that uh, turned down there. He's got a five inch 220 paper on there. And he's just kind of knocking anything off. You know when he went through and he cut over there on Bruce Cheney? What he's doing now is cleaning out any of that slag that might be developed on the bottom and the, well, in this case right now, the top of the shank. And he's dressing up the top of those heel bands, getting all of the uh, laser jet uh, spots off where it was cut in the machine. Okay, I wanna go ahead and show this full meat removal, good fall lines. You see everything coming together nicely. And in about seven minutes, you know, that's uh, that's pretty quick to, to do that much metal work. That's what I was that's what I was really astonished by. Hey Jim Four, how are you getting along? So now I'm back over here. He just, now he's working on the bottoms and cleaning things up. But what he's doing is he just mainly that's the 80 grit, like I said. So he wants to. Get the uh, main layer off, get things uh, knocked down, metal removal, and uh, then slow things down. And uh, he's got a 220 paper, and then he's got some 600s too. I don't know, know where exactly we'll go into that on this deal. But as you can see, the, 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 the tops, the bottoms, the sides, uh, and the tops and the sides, everything, all the metal metal. See, first come together and being prepped quickly. And, and I think it's important to see how he manages things in the bike. It's for efficiency, as you can see. He don't, he not, he not turning on that, he not turning on Willie all the time. He gets him in there, he gets him set up, and I think, I guess maybe after about 4,000 pairs, you learn exactly how to position those in the vice 
to where it's the least amount of times to move and execute what you need to get done. So it's efficient. They hook some tails in there. They're coming in a little hot there. So he's got that. He's cleaning up the ends of these shanks. See? You see the metal works there, spot on. And it's any way you want to look at it. I mean, there it is. Okay, now we're gonna, that is, the, that, so nine minutes in, that is the uh, end of the flap discs. Now we are going to paper discs. Nine minutes. Okay, right into the paper discs. Okay. See, Travis likes to use that five inch, uh, uh, I think it may be used in the auto, in the, auto body industry. Which, uh, you know, maybe a little shout out to my buddy Eddie Lang at Commercial Collision in Hayburn, Idaho. Good dude. Good, good guy. So, you know, uh, Travis, go ahead and, and, and right here at this point, I was asking him, now, what about if you wanted to do a taper? He said, you know, at this point, you could, you know, you could, you could continue on with your, with your uh, flap wheel and do a taper there. Or if you, uh, if you just, uh, I uh, want to taper on the inside. I'll uh, show you how to do that too. So that's coming up as well. So what is he? What he's doing there is he's just making sure he's got a nice, good, continual fall line. And what I like to do is just if you're nervous, uh, don't want to get in a hurry, you can't put it back. Stop. Take a look to the side like that. Make sure that you're not over grinding. Make sure you're not getting too tight in here, grinding that down, or having that fall down get flat on you. You see, he's got that 220 paper on there, and he doesn't go through a lot of them. I think he told me, is it one paper per side, Travis? Yeah. One paper per side. And that comes in a pack of 50, and they're $17 at Harbor Freight. And I think these are about $10 for a pack of five or so on benchmark abrasive. So uh, there's a couple places to source the same exact materials. Uh, I, you know, I mentioned that he likes the Metabos over the Bowers or some of the other ones because when you put that switch on there, the green ones spin at the optimal speed, he tells me. So I think that that's an important tip to try to, you know, I mean, because otherwise I've, I've tried this and had minimal success. That's why I wanted to come and pick up some additional tips. But uh, I was hooking a lot of the loops in there. And he said, you got to get things slowed down. And as you can see, when he goes in there and he gets after it, that uh, that disc, you know, that is giving, it goes in there and then it, it, it slows itself down where it's almost like a polishing. And then it comes right on up. And I noticed too, is he's always working the disc, you know, in a way that it's working a, 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 in a flatter surface instead of tear, turning it where it's coming into the, into the hanger slots. So, you know, I think all those little tricks that then you, you change the disc out when you decide, not because the disc is tore all the hell, you know. So, yeah, I've just learned a lot. It's been a great week out here. Can't thank the Finleys enough. Sean uh, C. Gibb around. I had uh, Carolina Morning come into town. There's her and Josh over there. Hey, guys. Hi. We're doing a spur making video, building the pair of spurs in under an hour. Carolina Morton, my wife of 19 years. Josh Finley, uh, that's Travis's brother, uh, youngest brother, rental car, and then inside of the coolest shop ever. A cool guy, Travis Finley. Had me out, so now he's, as you can see, he's changing out those discs, and he goes through those paper discs, but he said you gotta, uh, you want to make sure, uh, if you're trying anything, make sure the mill scale is off uh, of your metal because he said mill scale will almost like polish instead of uh, instead of sanding. So he likes to have some metal prep and then he did the 220 papers in really come in and shine. And you see where, how he's positioned that? He positions that in the shoulder of the spur. Yeah, uh, that way he can come and address them ends. You know, and touch them up. Holding good, Willie. You got bands down there, different ones. 
old projects that he didn't like that he scrapped. All right, that's it on the. Uh, okay, let me let me go in here. Four minutes and thirty seconds on paper discs. I just wanna I wanna flip them up. I think it's worth just a little bit of extra time just to show them. I'll bring them over here and show them on Jim Poor. Jim, need you to hold these, buddy. Okay. All right, that uh, I just want to wrap it out of five minutes. But as you can see, that spur is completely prepped in five minutes. Now ready for hangers. On to hangers. All right, folks, here we go. We're going to build a hanger. So the first thing that he does is he takes a pair of bolt cutters. Okay, and he snaps them heads and them nails off. Okay, he tries to go down about where those rings end. Okay, so he's just basically taking the heads off. Yeah, snap, snap, snap. So he gets those four heads off in 23 seconds. Jeez, he just doesn't slow down for much. So, okay, then he's made this jig. This is a cool jig. It has a fin on the bottom, okay? He puts the nail in, bends it over, smashes it down. He puts his finger in the bottom right there to hold that for his depth, okay? Then he brings it out there, out on the end, okay? Snaps that pair of vice grips on it, bends that over. Uh, Travis, stop right there. I want to show these folks what's unique about this jig you and I came up with. Okay, what we did is it's on our deals, it's it's inch and a sixteenth center to center. So we came in 15 sixteenths, drilled the hole, but then we knew if we put a little saddle right there, that that would be a perfect spot for that nail to go and it'd line up perfect for those hangers. So. But that, uh, and now what he's going to do is he's going to cut off this excess, okay? And this is on a half inch piece of stainless steel, 15 sixteenths, inch and a sixteenth, center to center. And we're using a 16D nail, three and a half inches long, okay? Pulls that out, and I'll show you that. The hanger spot on. Good, crisp, tight. It's a good hanger. Vice grips on there, bend it straight on down. That little saddle, you know, I had a deal real similar, but that little saddle there, we, uh, I saw Travis drill three holes in that piece of steel, and I said, uh oh, you made a mistake there. He said, nope, I didn't. What we're going to do is that middle hole is I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and split that right down the center, and then when we put those nails in there and bend them down, I have a saddle to hold it. I said, well, you got your thinking cap on today now. So there we go. So uh, this next step on these hangers, I mean, it's, I've never seen hangers come together so painless in a, in a complete process with a couple of key jigs. And these jigs are real simple. First off, we've told you how to make this. a six-inch long bar stock, and it is uh, half-inch thick, and it's got a fin welded on it just so you can hold it in a vise. So I... Uh, Put them down until you feel the nail down there. Bend it over. Put your vice grips on. Snap them down. Bend that over that. And in the heel bands, all the holes are 3 16 Now, a 16D nail is just slightly under that. But, uh, you know, for, for speed, they come together so nice. And that is so minuscule, you can't tell any difference in that hole. Okay, and you're gonna see how, how nice they fit in there when he slides those in there. They slide in there perfect. Okay, now he's got his next jig. Okay, this is the next uh, piece of brilliance. Okay, on this jig, he's got a, this, this jig does several different things, okay? It's got this block that is important that goes in an arbor press that you're gonna see next. The next, the stage he's gonna do right now, is he's gonna slide a nail through that block. This is half inch, it is three quarters. That's three-quarter inch steel, okay? So he just slid that through there, but you're gonna see this process is, is for, for speed, speed, speed on bending the strapping. Okay, so he's got a ruler here, okay? So he goes down to a spot that he's identified on the ruler. He bends it over that nail, see? And you're strapping T, two and three-quarter inches in length, yep. just under a half inch, so the uh, wide, 
and he goes down three quarters on his ruler. That's three quarters. See, he comes down three quarters, he stops there, he bends it over that nail. And basically what he's doing is just making those loops, okay? These loops have a flat side and a rounded side, okay? The next step of the process, the flat side will go down into the arbor press, okay? So he's made four of those loops and he's made four of those in four minutes and 47 seconds. And he had to hunt for parts. Okay, now. Next stop, Ernie Marsh. Yep, Ernie's the king of the jig, so we're on to Ernie Marsh, okay? Now, Travis has it in, he, this is a genius way of making hangers, okay? This block is positioned exactly the distance out from this arbor press, okay? Okay, he, he smashes that down. Now watch that, he did it so fast. I'm gonna show you on the second one, okay? What he does, he's bend it over, takes that chisel, and what he likes to do is, is get that in there where it's nice and tight, okay? But when he puts it in there, it's so tight that it won't swing. So he puts the chisel back in there, squeezes it, and opens it up again, okay? Then from there, takes that, uh, takes a, takes the same ruler. Pliers. Pliers? Oh, yeah, I'll get that. Okay, see what he does is he smashes that down first so that it goes right over and then he curves it on around him. What's what's key is that he's sliding that back. When he comes down, he gets it, he lets it smash there first, and he pulls it back. And what that does is it rolls it directly over that hanger. And that's how it rolls so tight. You know, and I it's just the slickest and quickest way that I've ever seen one done. See, and over it goes. See, he's got two two done. It is. It's sitting around last night. It's, uh, I'm gonna make you a few hangers. I think there's like a hundred in there. So it smashes it down. See, that's the key. That chisel with a dull edge right there. See how it pops out on each side? He says that gives it a nice, tight, clean look, so it doesn't wear out. See, Gib. I said, all right, I got you. There's three. You see what he's got here? So he ain't picking stuff up all the time. He's got stuff tethered to his station. See, he got, a, he got a hammer here, rulers. See? Now, T, I want you to go through that last step real slow. Bring it down. First initial step. Okay. It come, so he, he brings it down. It hits on the top. See there? It hits on the top and then he pulls it out. So the way you do that is adjust these screws out here on the end. I was having trouble. He was explaining it over the phone. That's what I said. I'll just come and see for myself. See, and you can see all four of those hangers are tight. Okay, now he's got a trick for how to get that hole in the right spot every time. Watch this slick little deal. Okay, he's got a block right up there. Be near marker. Oh, the pliers. What he's doing right now is just squaring up. You know how they'll get a little bit off center when you bend them back down? So they might be off just a little bit. Well, what he's doing is using those pliers and just squaring them up. See, he's got it all squared up there. And there's four nice hangers. Nice. I mean real nice. So then he's got a marker in his little tray. Brings that out. Sets that down. And inside of that marker, Tita, give me that marker when you get down if you don't mind. So he just said, uh, just got this like a Home Depot CGM. Uh, and uh, what it is, I went down and put a hole exactly where I wanted my uh, hole to be on my hanger, drilled it, and then I put that in there and then it's in the same spot. So what he does is he puts that to the back. So puts that right to the back of that hanger and makes the hole and bam. Boy, she's starting to get warm out here now, folks. But we're only nine minutes into this, and we've almost got four hangers built. And that was right from scratch. You saw it. Okay, you see where he's got his, uh, even his chuck there. See, he's not, he's not chasing after stuff. He's got his, his uh, drill.
drill bits and everything set up there. He's got his chuck on a little, he change bit out quick. And he's taking a page out of Mr. Clapper's book and have about three or four drill presses. Or Wilson, he's got that many too. <laughs> that's, that's Mr. Clapper, see? Billy Clapper. All right, so now what he's gonna do is uh, he'll put that back into that block, okay? That he, that he used in the arbor press. Okay, and then right underneath there, he's got a little cavity. He'll bring that down. Where he hit that with a punch, he'll just go ahead and drill that one out. Still needs to be recognized. I'd say he's the king of uh, two by seventy-two grinders. He uh, makes probably the best one that money can buy, and uh, that gentleman would be uh, Matt Humphreys. And uh, Matt is a heck of a nice guy. Hosted the uh, Bit and Spur Makers Gathering. Has a nice parts store with uh, a lot of parts available. I've built a lot of spurs out of his parts. Right over here, we got Matt Humphreys. See, got Humphreys here on the 2x72. You see the uh, lights dim just a little bit. It's nothing to be alarmed about. So what he's doing is he's just taking, he's gonna round those corners on out. See, he's rounding those on out. Taking that on there, cleaning those up. And these 2x72s are nice machines. You know, uh, you know there's just, there's a spot for everything. You know, Wilson well, says there's a spot for every kind of spur. Well, there's a spot for every kind of tool in the in the thing too, you know. So this is Travis's process and how he does it. Now he does it quick and uh, uh, pretty economical. And anybody that was, you know, maybe reluctant about getting into trying to build spurs or, or was thinking that it'd take a lot of money to, to try a habit like that, I mean, uh, uh, a good quality vice uh, seems to be real important. Um, you could get by with one angle grinder uh, in the in the beginning, and then if you had access to a welder, or if you had a welder, uh, it could you know get uh, get you some uh, parts from Mr. Humphreys or uh, cut your own, uh, the bands are, uh, however you want to do it. But we're about 12 minutes and 17 seconds in. I got four hangers made from scratch. With all left to do is set the rail pins in there. And that's a quick and painless process. Well, I'm going to just keep it right on rolling so everybody can see that it's real time. You know, because uh, you start adding all these parts, pieces of segments together. I think we're gonna have some time to burn, actually. So, all right, now we come back over to hangar station. And what he's got here, this looks like an oil filter. When I, when I very first saw it, I thought he had an oil filter sitting up here, but, but that is a big block of steel. And so he's got a, uh, what he's got is he's got a jig right here. This is pretty key, this is slick. Okay, you see how that's got a notch in it? Excuse me, it's got a notch in it. And I'll show you how that fits in there. See, I use a big hammer, short handle on it. I said, what, what, what's the deal with that, Travis? He says, well, you put that, you put your butt through there, and then to make sure you don't bend the post, you get you a piece of steel like this, a quarter inch steel, and cut your notch in it. Put your notch in there and then slide your button in there, and then you bang on it all you want, and then you get it loose, put it against another surface, bring it on out. They say you want to mushroom uh, around that with a big heavy headed hammer, and what that does is mushroom that head out.
drops right out. Two down. I just think a lot of these videos, when I was very first getting started, I would have liked to have known uh, how to go about some of these things. And hopefully you're getting a kick out of some of this. Uh, and and, and uh, we, uh, we were mentioning the folks that we admire and that are heroes to us. You know, they have the machines named after them and we admire their work. And so I just thought that might add to the humor of this. But we're 15 minutes and 15 seconds in. And there's four completed hangers. Next stop, weld them in. Break, break time, break, break time, T. Are you sweating yet? Carolina morning. All right, we're back over at his bench. And now he's gonna go ahead and set these uh, hangers. Okay, this is a cool process, what he does. Back over here at Willie. Okay, what he does, he takes a heel band that, uh, he just grabbed. He goes on the very edge there. See, he hits that. See, right there on the corner. What that does is puts it in there, makes it super tight. Yep. Okay, then that, then that, see, you want them nice and tight. He said, see, Gib, what they always look for is to see if the rouse are loose or if them hangers is loose. And he said, and I've seen quite a few years of be tightened up a little bit. <laughs> so this will get you uh, in the slot tight by directing the blow there. And what you don't want to do is just hit it right in the middle because that, that, that nail will bow on you and then your hanger won't fit correctly. So that's a good, that's a good trick in the process and to get them to sit down in the bands good. Take a, take a quarter inch piece of metal, hit it right on the top, right three, over the top of your hole. See? Three, three sixteenths. Three sixteenths metal. Right down on that hole, see? You see how it brings it in there? I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna show, excuse me, T. I'm gonna show you how tight those are. See how they're in there? Tight, tight, to where they can't slide around and wear out. Got another famous fur maker coming up here. Now this guy is super cool. One of the coolest and nicest guys that I've ever met. His name is Stuart Williamson. Break. All right, we've been waiting for a little bit here, but now we got our buddy Stuart Williamson. He's over here. We talk about a cool cat. Oh, Stuart, he's a good guy. Oh, he's the nicest guy to offer encouragement to everybody, say kind words. And you know, he's just kind of a guy that can do it all. Spurs, bits, jewelry. And you know, you gotta have a bandsaw that you got, this tool will kind of do it all in the shop for you. Cut metal, uh, you know, cut the hangers off, cut your shanks, cut your slots. I mean, it's, uh, it's a versatile tool, able to do it all. So what that Travis is doing is he's coming in there and he's cutting each one of those pins off as close as he can, each one of those hangers off. Cutting it up there close. Knocking those off, and then we're gonna take them right over. And we'll go right to the jig weld with them. From Stuart Williamson, Van Song. See, he's got his, uh, how he marks his spurs, uh, oh, yes, that'd be a, a good guy, old Stewie. All right, now we're gonna come right over here and just weld these uh, hangers in real quick. T said it'll just take a second. Welder's already going. I'll prop them up, weld them. I want to also show you how he sets them in to make sure that they uh, that they stay up. You see what he's done there? Is he puts that button down and he lets that be the stabilizer. See, he's got those those clamps on the back. Then he uses uh, he lines them up there. Where then he's got the hanger strap bracing it up. So he'll fire this baby up, weld them on in. I asked if he uses filler rod or if he just melts and nail down. Hey, remember that's been chamfered it inside of there on uh, with three sixteenths. So okay, or he took a quarter inch and chamfered that inside. So then he sees 
just in there, just putting the lantern down. Just takes him a second. Adds just a drop of filler rod. Take welds right in, still on his 110. I asked if it took much adjustment on the 110 versus the 220. He said a little bit, but you know, not really enough to notice. So, you know, if you've got only 110 power, don't be afraid to uh, get a 110 machine and give it a try. Just turn it up so you get your deep penetrating heat. See? And we'll pull this up, we'll flip them hangers around too so you can just see how they're, uh, how they fit in there so nice. But it's, it is key to chamfer those holes. So uh, you got that uh, extra meat there and so that you got that place for that filler rod to go. Uh, and then you're making sure that your 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 spurs aren't gonna lose their integrity down the road or have the hangers fall out. You got metal welded all together all the way around it. Run those babies in nice quick. Oh, that one rock on it. Next step, we're going to uh, rechange up the configuration on Matt Humphreys, and we'll go to a smaller belt and utilize the bottom pulley. And so we'll get set up on that, and then we're going to go in there and clean those welds up and clean the heel bands up. So break, break time, break. It's nice looking welds in there, T. Everything. Okay, back over here. See how he's got everything tethered to the station? Now put that pry bar in there. So he gets that two, two by 42, did you say, T? 48. Two by 48 belt, real tight. He's using that bottom pulley, okay? So he's got that set up. I think Travis told me he saw uh, Troy Flayhardy. I think he said he's seen uh, clean him up the inside this way too before. So this uh, may be known by a few other folks, but it's a really slick deal. He's got it set up with a 40 grit inside of there, and he just got done welding. and they just, you heard him just cool them spurs off. So now he's gonna it's pull them. It's not an outlaw belt sander, but we call it Matt, because he's a belt sander. Yep, it's not an outlaw. So yeah, maybe I need to make sure, it's not an outlaw, but it's, uh, uh, it's what we call Matt. Matt, uh, Matt is the, uh, Proprietary guy on the outlaw standards, the belt standards. Not nothing to do with that. Okay, now folks, he, we've reconfigured this belt sander with a, a two by forty-eight belt, okay, and he's got a forty grid on there. So we came right from the welding bench right over here. And then we're on the, the uh, two by 72 that we call Matt, after our buddy that has outlaw grinders. Like he said, Matt's super nice guy, hosted the first annual Bit and Spur Conference last year. And he's hosting it again this year. Hope to meet several of you down there. Now Travis is going on the, uh, on the two by 48. He's got everything tethered here to where the tools aren't falling on the ground and he's able to see, puts that in there and tightens that down. So it's real snug. Okay, now he's got a 120 belt on there. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna, he's gonna go ahead and clean up that inside heel there. Boy, I'll tell you what, he said, uh, uh, you know, if you're down here, if you're wondering where exactly you've got to get, you just come down here to the side. I saw him very first did this process. I was like, where, where exactly is this sander? You know, I just always get down off to the side if you're wondering what's going on. You can slow down. I mean, you don't uh, uh, don't have to go uh, as quickly as this, certainly. But, I mean, that is just a quick, clean, and efficient way to do it. Very quickly. You know, and I think most belt sanders would be accommodating to flip things around where you could put a 2x48 on there. But... It's just a smaller belt, uh, 
way to utilize your 2x72 to get into that tough spot where you can't get into with an angle grinder. And there you're getting it done with that other tool. Okay, you get done from there, coming back over here. Is it to show how, uh, we're gonna show how well these hangers, go ahead and flip them hangers around, Travis. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, I mean, would you mind, they're hot right now, but could you show, I mean, I wanna show how tight they are and how there's no gap. See how there's no gap in between any of that? Look at how tight that is. And, and the other thing too is, is look at how tight they are around the rods. See how tight that is around the rods? So they don't wear out. That is a handmade hanger, welded in, and, and sanded down, everything done in like 18 minutes. The whole hanger process, welded in, heels clean. Okay, break. Yep. All right, next, we're gonna, uh, Travis does something that's kind of unique to his builds. So what he does is he takes a quarter inch bit and he'll chamfer the inside of where that row pin is gonna go. So he's decided that uh, where he's chamfering right there with that quarter inch inside of that 3 16th pin, he, is, he decided which is gonna be the inside and the outside. So, and he's gonna go ahead and make these slick finished on the inside and what he's doing now is he's gonna go ahead and put his rouse in there. So we're back over here, Jim Poor. Hey, Jim Poor, how you getting along, buddy? Okay, back over here. These are the uh, hoof rouse that we're gonna go ahead and put in there that Travis uh, uh, kind of thought it was kind of a neat design. But what he's gonna do is he's gonna go ahead and clean, clean up just the slag that came off of that laser cut. Clean that up. And you're gonna see a good trick coming up here. Trick that's coming up is, you know, when you go to set that rowel pin in the back of the spur, a lot of times you get that too tight and then the rowel doesn't wanna uh, turn. Because you put the metal too tight against the other metal and everything, there's no give in there, there's no space. So what Travis uh, likes to use, he uses a, a thin piece of stainless steel that he has uh, taken that paper disc to and made it real, real, real thin. And then he'll slide that in the back in between the rowel and the shank. And what that'll do is, is give it enough space. So the uh, so he chamfered it that one side, that one side. Now he doesn't do anything with the buttons. Doesn't do anything with the buttons. Doesn't ground down the spur button. Doesn't need to do anything. So he's got that thin piece of stainless steel. He's gonna get that started down in there with his brass hammer, see, it's set down. So you make sure that that's situated in there where he's got just a little bit of space in there. See, that's a spacer. What that does, is just, it, it's, it's got a three, it's got a three sixteenths slot in it so that you can uh, slide that uh, piece of stainless steel underneath there, give you the adequate spacing. And then he's gonna go ahead and uh, set the route pin now. So he's got the spacer in there. And take that big ball peen hammer and a peen all the way around getting that head knocked down. And then he says, and then from there, see Gib, I just go ahead and fill the rest of the hole in with the extra metal that's there. So he's actually, with that quarter inch, he's actually, uh, made a little cavity there to when it, then the excess off of that spur button It doesn't need to be trimmed cut ground anything He just smashes that down into that quarter inch cavity that he made and then he'll go ahead and dress that out with his paper disc And, and then it'll be a no-show There'll be nothing that shows in our which you know he told me from a safety standpoint It's nice too, you know because that that can't, that smooth, that smooth inside can't get hooked on anything. There's the horse, the, the horse hoof uh, type of route. All welded up, ready to go.
I think we're well within the time limits. Must have had to grab another route pin. Sometimes we're going to want to be too short. sides of the route pin. You know, a lot of times on my bench what I've got set up in like a, a little drill here is a 3 16 and then I'll just ream that hole out just a little bit. and drill 3 sixteenths out in it. Ready? Uh-huh. Address that and put that piece of flat iron in there, pull her on off of there, and see how that spins and it's tight. And that's what that stainless steel thing looks like again. And then you say sure you'll take that flap disc to her. There you go. Now folks. Okay, folks. Now he's just finished up uh, back ends of the heels. Now he's coming back over, or the back of the shanks. Now he's coming back over the tops of the heel bands. And what he's doing is just kind of cleaning everything up there. But I think we're gonna be well under an hour on this build. I mean, with, uh, we had to stop a little bit to think about what we're gonna do on the next step. But you see uh, all the processes involved in making the spur from, uh, from grabbing the parts out of the rack to having a fully set of functioning spurs. Now they're not dressed yet, of course, but I mean, that's a fully functioning set of spurs, homemade hangers to swing perfectly. Completely redone. Thanks, T, Sonic the Spur Maker. He don't talk much. Now you gotta mark the work. This is the way that Travis Finley does it. So he goes ahead and centers that underneath the 20 ton press. And you can place that exactly where you want it. You know, once it's stiff, it's enough to give it a good indention in there. There you go. He's got a 208 in there, and he's got the Idaho one in there. He's gonna put the Finley in there. So that's what we built today. That is a slick way to do that. Just put that in there, give it two or three pumps after you get a lot of resistance, it goes in there, stamps it. Easier on the thumbs, and you get it in the same spot every time. Show you how that turned out. 208, Finley. Look at that build, folks. It's good all the way around. Good, tight hangers. One hour. From parts, out of the bend, to built. They're perfect. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to wrap it up with another video. They really stamped it in there nice. Well, I had to change clothes. Usually I've had to put more clothes on in Idaho when it's too cold, but this time I was ringing wet. I'd never been so hot making a pair of spurs, but I tell you, I think it's... Uh, it's 90 degrees here, it feels like 104, I think it said. We just had a really nice time down here building with Travis Finley. And uh, we completed this, he completed this set of spurs in a one hour build. 
And what we want you to make sure that you take away from it is, is that uh, anybody can get in and try the hobby. Uh, it's, and you can do it with affordable machinery and you can do it on a budget. And it, it's pretty neat to, to see what you can kind of come up with with your own hands. So don't be afraid to try your hand at making a set of spurs. Uh, and if there's any way that we can help out with anything, please let us know. And hopefully you've uh, been kind of educated on the whole process on, on from when they come from parts all the way until they're bent up. And I was just given word that these are going to Carolina morning. So earlier in the week, Travis and I built a set and uh, we'll put some, he's showing me some soldering jobs. So you'll have to be uh, on the lookout for those, but we did some card suits on there and I'll, I'll post those, but he was showing me how to cut the stuff out. And we're gonna do some soldering videos in that as well. So we've got soldering videos, the complete build. Hopefully this has helped to uh, educate you and, and give you some more knowledge. Uh, on spur making and hopefully it uh, in, encourages some of you to, to give it a try. The pool is warm as they say and, and uh, we're welcome to all kinds of spur makers young and old and, and whatever we can do to help out please let us know. Hopefully you've enjoyed the videos and uh, have a great day. That's a one hour build.